Burlington Bees baseball is on the air on News Radio 1490 KBUR. We start with a Case Mine Community Credit Union pregame show. Stop in today and discover the advantages of membership. Case Mine Community Credit Union. It's where you belong. Now, here's the voice of the Bees, Daniel Trevinos. The Wisconsin Timber Rattlers turned the table on the Bees. After Burlington earned a 4 to nothing win in Game 1, Wisconsin returned the favor with a shutout win of its own over the Bees and by the same score yesterday. And both teams saved their best pitchers for Game 3, the decisive game of this three-game set, and that's for tonight. And with that, we say hello and welcome to Time Warner Cable Field at Fox City Stadium here in Grand Chute, Wisconsin. I'm Dan Trevinos, broadcasting Burlington Bees Baseball for News Radio 1490 KBUR. You're tuned into the Bees Case Bond Community Credit Union pregame show. And again, we're getting ready for Game 3, essentially the rubber match of this three-game set between the Burlington Bees and the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Remember the regular season record for the Burlington Bees, 67 and 72. As for the Timber Rattlers, 78 and 61. The right-handers on the hill in this game. Drew Granier getting the start for the Bees. He's 11 and 10 with a 3.21 ERA. The right-hander going for the Timber Rattlers, David Goforth, 10 and 8 with a 4.66 ERA. Well, first pitch of Game 3 was scheduled for 6.35 p.m. Central Time. Looks like it's actually going to be at 7.35 p.m. Central Time. We definitely had some showers here in Grand Chute, but they're clearing off the field right now, and it looks like we should be good to go in about 20 minutes or so. Well, I want to recap yesterday's game for the Bees, a tough loss. But before we do that, I want to introduce Susan Dink, beat writer with the Hawkeye, and she's here with us right now. Susan, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, Daniel. How's it going? It's going well. Obviously, you made the trip up here to watch the team since we're going to recap this game and you were here to watch it yesterday, I'm going to have you chime in a little bit. Okay. First, let's just set the scene. The Bees won game one, four to nothing, and the mood was high. Everybody was energized, ready to go for game two. Unfortunately, the Bees lost game two of the 2012 Midwest League playoffs to the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers by the final score of four to nothing on Thursday night. Both teams have earned two shutout wins over each other this year. We'll start early on. Brandon Macias reached on an error by Max Muncie to lead off the bottom of the first Muncie appeared to catch the pop-up and lose control upon transferring the ball into his throwing hand. This all taking place in foul territory. Unfortunately, the bases umpire Alex Tosi ruled that Muncie dropped the ball and Macias eventually singled into right and scored on a two-out RBI single by Nick Ramirez. Ramirez also scored on a two-out RBI double by Cameron Garfield. And Yadiel Rivera added a two-out RBI single to bring in Garfield and give the Timber Rattlers a 3 to nothing lead after the first. So, Susan, how about that play by Max Muncie? We both watched it yesterday. What was your impression? Did you think that he actually dropped it, or was it on the transfer? It was really close. I I, I wasn't really sure, but it was just such a, a rough way, demoralizing way for the Beast to start out, and then for the Timber Rattlers to go and score all with two outs. It was right. just such a tough thing for the Beast to overcome on the road and after that play, and they just faced a really uphill battle. I think in the booth, at least for me, I was shocked. Three runs against A.J. Cole, this guy who is obviously one of the best prospects in all of minor league baseball and obviously in the A's organization. And then he gives up a three spot, and it's all uh, unearned runs. Did it seem to add a little insult to injury in the sense that, wow, this is one of our best options on the mound, and now we're down 3 nothing early? I think so. You know, we hadn't seen him give up four runs since, what was it, May 29th? May 29th. 29th. In fact, his first two starts were the only starts this season he allowed more than three runs. And you just, you can't do that in a playoff game when you're on the road and you had all the momentum coming in. You, you know, you lost the sixth straight to end the regular season, but then you come back with such a strong game, you know, behind Tanner Peters, you know, in that defense. And they finally had something going. And then to have that happen right off the bat was just really tough. We'll continue. Cole was burned in game one. Cole made 12 pitches to Macias before the leadoff man singled into center field to put runners at the corners in the second inning. A run scored on a ground ball by Chadwin Stang, and Cole took the loss after he pitched four innings, allowed four runs, only one of them earned, five hits and one walk. He also matched his season total of three wild pitches within the first two innings. That was something we weren't expecting. The righty also had five strikeouts in the loss, and like we mentioned, he had not allowed four runs in a start since May 29th and only allowed more than three runs twice this season with the Bees, and both of them came in his first two starts. You know, to give him credit, though, you know, he came back after those two innings, and he really, the next two, was pretty strong and didn't give up anything else. And then Nate Epley came in, and and David Moda came in, and they just looked really strong out of the bullpen and didn't give up anything else but that offense that had struggled all season. 
just could not get anything going against Chad Pierce, who had a complete game. Well, let's go right to that offense. Like you said, it was a struggle. Uh, going over the offense, obviously a day after the Bees earned that 4 to nothing shutout win, they only allowed three hits, and then they only get three hits and get shut out by the score of 4 to nothing, which is kind of odd. We'll get to that a little later. Aaron Shippen, Wade Kirkland, John Wooten, Bobby Crocker were the only Bees to reach base in Game 2. The Bees had nine hits in Game 1. Wisconsin had seven in Game 2. So it's almost as if the box scores just flipped over. Right, right. Um, but again, the offense struggled towards the end of the season, but we saw good offense in Game 1. Why not in Game 2? That's a question you could ask all season. They would have that strong game and come back and couldn't put three hits together. Yep, and obviously it's inconsistency with this Bees club. There's a reason they were at 35 and 35 in the second half. Like we mentioned so many times, it's enough to get into the playoffs, but it does sort of show you that this is a team that's still trying to figure out are they an above five average, uh, 500 team or are they below? They're right in the middle right now. And What are you thinking as far as tonight? You have Drew Ronnier on the mound, but that's not necessarily a surefire win anymore because he doesn't get run support. Right. I mean, his last outing, he took the loss, but he struck out 12. Mm-hmm. And you just never know what team is going to show up tonight. Hopefully, I'm, I'm sure Aaron Nicola, the manager, has them realizing this is it. They lose tonight. They go home. There is no more season their season will be over. Wisconsin will obviously move on. Right, and I know a lot of guys have already talked about that before the game. Food in the clubhouse was still loose, which is obviously important, but it's really all about scoring. And like I said to you yesterday, my biggest fear is the Bees go down by a run or two early, and that's it. That is it. Drew Granier won't give any runs up after that, and the Bees might not get any runs. They might not, but at the same time, I'm... I'm almost thinking they're overdue to have that big comeback That's where true. if they get down a run or two that they will come back because they haven't done that for such a long time. And the Bees are just due to score a lot of runs. They haven't done that in a long time. I believe the last time they scored over five runs was back on, and I'm looking at the schedule here, boy, that was back on August 26th and a victory over Kane County, 7-6 to six the score wow. there. So, yes, it's been a struggle for the offense, but like you said, Maybe it'll just flip-flop. The inconsistency could swing in the bees' favor today. That would be really nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> it would be really nice. One last step before I let you go, Susan. I know you love the game notes. The last four playoff games uh, the Timber Rattlers have been involved in, dating back to 2005, I should say, last three. I have four stuck in my head. They've been <laughs> four to nothing ball games. The Timber Rattlers are one and two in those games. Here's another one. The bees also lost game one of last year's playoffs by a score of four to nothing, and they won game two by four runs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't should know if that be, means anything or not. <laughs> should we be taking bets here? This is going to be a 4 nothing <laughs> game or a four-run game at some point? No bets associated with <laughs> baseball, Susan. But, uh, <laughs> well, Susan, thanks again for joining us. Uh, hopefully it's a big win for the Bees tonight. Thank you, Daniel. All right, when we come back to the Bees Case Fine Community Credit Union pregame show, we'll hear from Bobby Crocker and John Nestor and see what they have to say about tonight's game. Stick around. Great insight on the way. You're listening to Bees Baseball on News Radio 1490 KBUR and KBUR. Welcome back to the Bees Case Bank Community Credit Union pregame show. I'm Dan Trevinos. I'm sitting with two of the members of the Bees. That's John Nestor, the catcher, and Bobby Crocker, the outfielder. First of all, I want to start with you, John. Another chance to catch Drew Granier. Any word on how long he'll be able to go today? I really don't think there's any limitations other than, uh, you know, 100, 105 pitches, whatever, you know, whatever the max would be. Just, you know, playoffs, different, different story. They're not really putting limitations on guys. Well, the only reason I ask, obviously, all the starts he made this year tied for the uh, lead league, and obviously he also had so many innings. But he was so sharp that last time out, and you were behind the plate for that. Were you impressed at all? Yeah, I mean, he's been really consistent all year. I mean, he's had his, his ups and downs just like anybody, but, you know, he's, he's made pitches when he's need, needed to, and he's been, you know, arguably our best pitcher all year. So when you were working with him in that last game, did you feel as if you two had a sink? And, again, it's against the same lineup, so it's kind of important going into this game. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he kind of trusts the catchers every game and just lets me or, you know, Rickles, if Rickles is catching him, we just, you know, we kind of got a little scouting report and we stick to it and he, he just kind of rolls with it. He, he just focuses on the pitch at hand and doesn't, you know, doesn't try to out, outthink the, the batter like some guys do. So you have the same lineup and obviously he's going against the same guy as well. That's not something you can control. But is it the same plan of attack against this lineup? And what exactly are you guys trying to accomplish? I mean, basically, just do what Drew's done all year. He throws a lot of strikes. He throws his off speed for strikes, and uh, 
you know, as long as he's working ahead of guys and, you know, he's got his breaking stuff working, he's going to come out and do a great job. Right, well, Bobby, I wanted to talk to you a little bit as we switch over to the offense here. You've had some success so far. What's worked for you in this playoffs? Uh, I think playoffs is, you know, it's kind of like a fresh start. Uh, obviously put the season behind you and, and turn the page and uh, really towards the end of the season, I mean, figure, uh, you know, we kind of struggled and uh, now we just turn it around, play some decent baseball and uh, it's been going well. Well, I'd have to imagine that after that home run in game one, it was a big shot and I think a lot of people were pretty energized after that. Has any of that sort of faded after yesterday's shutout? I mean, I think we did. Uh, Pretty well at the plate yesterday. Um, our approaches were solid, and we hit the ball hard. We just kind of got unlucky. Um, they actually do have a, you know, a good set of outfielders who cover some ground, and um, hopefully today we'll just find uh, a way to land a little more of those balls that we hit hard. So. Well, you brought up a question I wanted to ask John, since I'm asking both of you here now about the offense. Was it a little frustrating that everybody seemed to get to every ball yesterday? <laughs> yeah, it was. It was just one of those games, man. It's baseball. The guy put up a. No, no run, three hit, nine inning, complete game. And you know, if anybody knows much about baseball, you would kind of see that there were a lot of balls hit hard that could have, you know, turned that game a completely different direction. They just, you know, happened to stay up in there long enough for a guy to run it down. Uh, I mean, it just tends to happen sometimes. Has the coaching staff said anything to you guys about that? I mean, do they try to manage that as far as your mental approach after a tough game like that? No, I mean, the, the coaches are just trying to be as positive as they can right now. I mean, we had that rough skid at the end of the season. Now it's, you know, we, we had a little kind of team meeting, little theme idea to take into the games, and, you know, we're kind of rolling with it. And, you know, we just got to look at it as just one game. One game we got to win, uh, not let last night affect us at all. Well, Bobby, I wanted to ask you this. You mentioned that it seemed like the approach was solid. What exactly is the approach now going into a game against a pretty solid starter? I mean, I think that, like I said before, we just accepted that we struggled and uh, something needed to change. Unfortunately, last night, like I said, we got unlucky. But um, I think our biggest thing is just swinging at strikes. And a lot of these starting pitchers are the same where they rely on locating their fastball and uh, kind of nibbling. And as long as we keep putting the ball in play hard, something's bound to happen. So, Well, two very different stories for you guys this season as far as playing time goes and success at the plate and in the field. I want to start with you, Bobby. You got off to a slow start. You got hurt. And then you started to really find some consistency. You finished with a strong year. When you look back at this season and now you're in this game, what exactly does it all mean to you this year? I mean, Right now, the biggest thing for me is just kind of living in the present at bat to at bat. And uh, I definitely did struggle at times and um, learned a lot in my first full season. Uh, one of them being just, you know, knowing that you're going to struggle at times and uh, being able to turn the page. A lot of times just doing less is more. And it, it takes me um, a lot to accept that, uh, I think, considering my playing style and, and I, I don't like to get to get beat. and. Um, I mean, I think I learned it the hard way. I definitely had some tough, you know, stretches in this season. But uh, all in all, I needed to go through it. And, uh, you know, like I said, just looking forward to turning the page and finishing playoffs and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Well, I want to go to you, John. A very interesting year for you. Obviously, you spent some time with the Bees last year, of course, and now you're back with them this year. First half, it was a little bit of a struggle. You didn't get a lot of playing time. And I remember seeing a tweet from you in the second half about how you needed that same approach at the plate in the second half. And you did have the numbers to back that up. A strong performance at the plate in the second half. Season's almost over. What does this game mean to you? Um, I mean, like Crocker said, it's a new start. Um, you know, I had first couple weeks this season went great. And then it was kind of a, a real tough couple months there in the middle. and. Uh, you know, I kind of turned it on the second half, kind of like I did last year. Um, I've always been a second half kind of hitter. Maybe it's just as the weather warms up, I warm up a little bit. But, uh, you know, right now it's just go out there and, and just take it one game at a time. You know, stats don't matter at this point and everything's out the window. So, you know, you just got to go at bat by at bat and just do whatever you can to help the team win. Well, you said one game at a time and this could be the last game of the season. I'm curious, any predictions for tonight? Oh, I mean, you know what we're going to say. We're obviously going to win, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, one game at a time. And, Bobby, since I gave John the first word, I'll give you the last word. Final thoughts on this series in general. What's it been like? I mean, it's been tough. Like I said, uh, 
these guys got a hold of us just before the season ended, and um, it's just nice to be able to have that fresh start where, where stats don't matter, and it's a little more uh, team team based, and we're in it together. and And I think, I mean, they're a very beautiful team. Anything can happen uh, postseason. So, All right, well, you heard it here first from John Nestor and Bobby Crocker, two of the team's leaders. It's not about the stats; it's about the wins at this point. Hopefully, you guys can get a good, big win tonight. Appreciate it. All right, we'll send it back to News Radio 1490 KBUR and KBUR.com. Welcome back to the Bees Case Bond Community Credit Union pregame show. I'm Dan Trevino's broadcasting Bees baseball coverage for News Radio 1490 KBUR. We should be done with an hour delay, an hour long rain delay to game three, the decisive game of this three game set here in the first round of the 2012 Midwest League playoffs. The Bees in Wisconsin playing the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Again, the f- second half of the season for the Bees, they finished 35 and 35. And remember, the Timber Rattlers won the division in the first half of the season. Well, they've already exchanged lineups since the weather was pretty much the storyline of the day here in Grand Chute. Let's go ahead and share the game's weather report. And, of course, the game's weather report is brought to you by Gary Roberts Insurance. Fans, you never know what the weather might do to your home, so make sure you call Gary Roberts Insurance at 754-7070. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Well, it says mostly cloudy. I can tell you it is completely covered in clouds. The entire sky is draped in gray. It is not necessarily the prettiest sight, but we did get a rainbow earlier, which was kind of nice. 59 degrees at the ballpark at the start of the game. It feels like a true 59 degrees. Humidity at about 90%. Pure precipitation at around 25% as we start the ball game. Wind only blowing at about 4 miles per hour, supposedly, in the Grand Chute area. However, it doesn't really look like it's having much of an effect at the ballpark. The wind will kick up to about 8 or 9 miles per hour. Looks like most of the rain has passed, so we should be able to get this game in. Hopefully it's a speedy one as these guys... Whether they win or lose for the Bees, we'll have to head back home, back to Burlington. Hopefully it's after a victory. And finally, with the weather report below tonight, at around 56 degrees. And again, it should stay clear from here on out. Well, they should be set to take the field in just a moment. Let's go ahead and share a little info with you. We already mentioned the Bees lost yesterday the final score of 4 to nothing in Game 1. They won 4 to nothing, so now it's Game 3. This season against the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, the Bees went 9 and 10. Now that's including a three-game sweep to end the season in which the Bees were swept by the Timber Rattlers in Burlington. And like, well, John Nestor and Bobby Crocker said, it doesn't matter what happened in the regular season at this point. It's a clean slate here in the postseason. And the Bees proved that in game one. We also talked to Susan Dank about inconsistency with this club. Well, hopefully that means that fortune will swing back in the Bees' favor and they can get a win tonight. They have the right guy on the mound, Drew Granier, to get them off to a good start. Granier, the ace of the staff all season long, a 2012 Midwest League all-star pitcher. Granier led the league in so many categories. Most notably, he led the league in strikeouts, innings pitched, and starts. Tied for that mark with 28 straight starts. Did not miss one this year. And again, he pitched the most innings with 162 and two-thirds, and he led the league with 167 strikeouts. He was in the top 10 in ERA at 321 this season. Now he goes head-to-head with David Goforth. These two guys met up last time. They both pitched. That was back on September 2nd. Unfortunately for Granier, despite a career-high 12 strikeouts, he took the loss. But again, the stats don't matter. Now it's the postseason. Game three coming up next. They've taken the field. On News Radio, 1490 KBUR and KBUR.com.